After just negotiations over the Uris have left the two nations and their neighbor Sudan short of an agreement to regulate how Ethiopia will operate the dam and fill its reservoir. There is no result that all sides have appreciated. Uh, in fact, it is a very, a very ardust thing to do by our negotiators, by our government, by everybody else. Uh, it is in the nature of the issues and uh, and it's also in the nature of negotiators like Egypt uh, that has already uh, uh, delayed these negotiations that long. The ambassador blamed Egypt for its rigid stance throughout the eight-year-long negotiation. Egypt kept bringing unjust colonial treaty as justification, a treaty of which Ethiopia was not part. For a negotiation, the negotiators should come with the attitude of giving and taking. Egyptians, in all these years of negotiations, have been focusing on one thing, that is um, realizing the unjust treaty, colonial treaty, which allots a major share of this water to Egypt and gives small amount and the rest to other riparian countries. Ethiopia has not been party to this negotiation. Above all, this negotiation is unfair, is unjust, and uh, Egyptians in one way or another always would like to bring in, directly or indirectly, the very essence of this treaty, which allots the major portion of the water to Egypt. As you know, more than 86% of this water emanates from Ethiopian highlands. Ethiopia has not been using this water for any benefit so far. This is high time for Ethiopia to use it for its development purposes. Uh, this is what Egyptians could not accept. And that's very unfair. Illustrating his remark with recent withdrawal act by Egypt from the webinar Trilateral Talks, Dina Farder said Egypt used delaying tactics as a key obstacle to reach a major deal on the GERD. They always use uh, a delay tactics, pro tactics of procrastination. They come to negotiations, they start the negotiations, and uh, then they withdraw before the negotiation ends. This is what typically has happened this week. This week, this week there was a virtual negotiations among three countries. Uh, it is a teleconference type of negotiations. The Egyptians were negotiating on one part. On the other side, on the other hand, while the negotiation was through, they went out and they were talking about the faltering of the negotiations. This is what exactly happened now too. For us, the negotiation has not ended. Still, it has continued on the, because of the Sudanese demand to consult with the leadership. And the, then the proposal by Sudanese to bring the issue to the prime ministers of three countries, there was a pause of the negotiations. Otherwise, negotiation was not stopped. But the Egyptians, in the meantime, have walked out and went to the United Nations. As we hear it, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. There was good faith on the part of Egyptians. Dina says agreements would have been reached during the recent negotiation. From the negotiations that has been taking place uh, this this two this last week, there were closure of some gaps on technical issues. There were there were agreements on on major issues, technical issues. Those the legal issues were not yet resolved. These are the gains, but unless it is concluded unless there is a good faith on the part of the Egyptians to negotiate and uh, finalize it, uh, is still a waste of time and a waste of uh, effort. And this is what has happened. Ethiopia, Sudan and Egypt agreed on Friday to resume stalled talks over Africa's mega hydropower dam project through the good office of the AU. It is to be recalled that Egypt has opted to mistrust the AU and rather resort to the Arab League and the UN Security Council, drawing condemnations against itself from several quarters.